You got a phone in your pocket in 48 hours. Grab some friends and let's make a movie. Cameras are everywhere these days, from DSLRs to iPhones to GoPros, everybody has the capability to make movies. And the 48-hour film project is committed to getting people to put their cameras where their mouths are and get off their butts and actually do it rather than talk about it. Hi, I'm Keith Flippin, producer of the 48-hour film project here in Hampton Roads. Hampton Roads is one of 100 cities participating in 2013 in an international competition of filmmakers. On a Friday night at 7 p.m., 26 teams of filmmakers show up to receive a prop, a line of dialogue, and a character, all of which have to be used in a film that they're going to write, shoot, edit, and turn in by 7 p.m. Sunday night. That's just 48 hours. Included in that, they each draw a genre that their film has to adhere to. So what follows is always a weekend of chaos, creativity, and a lot of fun. Our first film is called The King of B-Movies by Brain Co. Productions. And that's the genre they drew, B-Movie. So they set out to collect all of the elements you could ever imagine belonged in a B-Movie and put them all in one place to give us seven minutes of pure fun. Stardust Studios proudly presents Invaders from Planet X, the latest and greatest creation of Max Milby, King of the B-Movie. Join us for a rare behind-the-scenes look at the picture that's got everyone in Hollywood Bursting with anticipation. Hi, I'm Max Milby, and I'm the director of Invaders from Planet X. I'm what you might call a prolific filmmaker. Last count, I've got 136 movies, and I'm still going... 137! Excuse me, 137, thank you. And I'm still going strong. I'm just getting warmed up. It's like I always say, you give me a weekend, I'll give you a movie. <laughs> I'm excited. Very excited. Are we ready, people? <laughs> and now... Let's meet the leading man and award-winning dentist, Lance Titterton. Uh, uh, Max was looking for a star for his new movie, Invasion from Planet X. I'd like to think I was his first choice. I paid him the usual $10,000 finder's fee, which Max explained was standard procedure for Hollywood. And then he said to me, You're it. You're the star of my new movie. It really is quite an honor for me. Oh, sorry. I've got plenty of Novocaine. Don't worry about it. Uh, can, can you hold this? Ooh. Oh, okay, let's see what we can do here. That way. Uh, over. Uh, all right. It's always a thrill working with Max. He knows exactly what he wants from you. We've had a lot of private sessions, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, where he's really helped me find my character's motivation which is to resist the invaders from Planet X. And to sleep with him, which I really wasn't even aware of. Happy endings for everyone. Mm -hmm. Carl? Yep? How's the saucer coming? Oh, fine, fine. Well We'll be ready in just a jiffy. Mm-hmm. Carl, I don't like to nitpick, but uh -huh. that looks like a hubcap on a string to me. Hmm. I can see the string, Carl. Oh, that is an astute eye you have there, Max. Well, thank you. Yeah. Please fix it, Carl. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist, and I have a vision. And sometimes, to see that vision through, you, you have to step on a few toes. You know, ruffle a few feathers, break a few hearts, or eggs. I don't know. I mean, if I could see the string on a rocket ship flying through space, then maybe the audience can see it. That's not acceptable to me. Not on my set. Not in my space. Looks like movie making magic at its best, eh, boys? I have no idea what I'm doing at all. Looks like he's not the only one. Okay, camera ready? Ready. Good. Everyone settled? Are my spiders ready? ready. Spiders? Good. Okay, here we go, people. And action! Great Scott! The giant arachnids are attacking! You mean these giant spiders that are attacking us? I thought that's what I just said! Oh, Professor! Print. Did you get that? I ran out of film. Okay, back to one, people! Okay. Well, we're a little behind schedule. 
I usually like to wrap things up by the third day, but you know, you have to go with the flow, roll with the punches, swim with the fishes. Speaking of which, today is a big day for us. We're going to be shooting, hopefully, on the water. <laughs> I can find it. <laughs> and as anyone will tell you, that's difficult to do, but you don't get to be king of the bee movies by playing it safe. Come on, people, let's move it out. Let's go, more stuff to do. I never heard of a movie taking nine days to shoot. They eventually found the water. And action! Uh-oh. Looks like they're having a ball. Sure, I've done plenty of movies with Max. But let me tell you, I don't care what they say about him. He always treats us monsters like we were peoples. Respect, you know? I mean, you try baking at a, 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 a rubber suit for 10 hours a day, you know, sweating your ass off. But I still got my dignity. And Max Milby gave me that. Hey, sweet cake, can you give me that coffee with a little stir thing? Yeah, yeah. What, what's the choice? <laughs> Sounds like someone needs some R E S P E C T. Hey, the stir. Man, that smells like wet dog. Man. And so, hey, Rachel Shanto, what you got cooking? Well, it's been kind of a challenge. As you know, we've been lost in the woods for several days now. Now, normally, what I'd be doing is a little light lunch with some little ham sandwiches. But with things being what they are, this time we're going to get a chance to sample some of the natural flora and fauna that grows out here. Ooh. Mealworms, anyone? And I hear that Troy's been bitten by a snake. <sighs> Ouch. That's going to leave a mark. So we'll see what happens with that. He's looking pretty tender. The good news? We're on our way home. The bad news is we lost Troy to a snake bite. I, it's been a tough adventure. But in the long run, it'll be worth it. Invaders from Planet X will be my masterpiece. I'm here with Matt Gilbert, who played the professor and dentist, dentist in the King of B-Movies. One of the things about B-Movies, mm -hmm. uh, that historically, you know, you've always got very creative liberties taken with, with props and with set oh, design. Yeah. And definitely. those of you guys did the same thing yeah. with the, uh, the UFO. Right. Well, as well, you know, the prop this year that every team needed to use was a car part. Mm -hmm. And some people tried to kind of like sneak it in here and there, but we thought, let's just be obvious about it. And you know, there'll be movies you always would see a saucer or a pie tin flying around, so we just took two hubcaps, put a couple of lights on them, and literally, I think, uh, the Max, the director character, says, um, it looks like yep. two hubcaps on a string. Does anybody else see this? You know, so it was very much in the genre, and I thought, you know, Good use of prop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you pulled it all Definitely. out. You had, you had spiders, you had uh, the spiders, we had the hubcaps, we had the gorillas, hubcaps, had had the gorillas. we got our line right. <laughs> um, yeah, that was on me. Um, and, you know, one word off. And That's it's right, out. you're disqualified. Yeah, so, so saying that line verbatim is very verbatim important. Verbatim is very important. So we got that in. And, uh, and what was uh, it like winning Best Actor? A uh, total shock, an absolute total shock. I was not expecting it. This was one of the uh, years where we, we just got together to have a lot of fun. We had a great script, it was a lot of fun. I did not expect that. I thought, you know, we might get best use of proper something along those lines. I figured we'd get a couple of awards, but it was a lot of fun to make. It really, really was. Yeah. Well, it shows. Thanks. It shows. Thank you, man. Thank you. At the 48 hour film now, when teams draw their genre out of a hat, they have a choice. They can either keep it, or they can put it back and get what's called a wild card genre. Now, these are generally more difficult than our regular genres, and B-Movie was a great example of one. But B-Movie was a pretty easy one to execute as compared to... Operetta, which is our next film's wildcard genre. Works out fine if your team is made of musicians or people who can sing, but what if it's not? And add to that a required character that's a chef, a required line of dialogue that's, I thought that's what I just said, and a required prop called a car part, well then you've got the makings of 
possibly a disaster. But our next team, New Rook Productions, took all of that and they committed full force. And so they came up with a film called A Rock Opera. Since Rachel Shanto, I appreciate your efforts. I know you slept so hard cooking on the stove. Have some bread and wine, spread with garlic cloves. I'm glad you could grace us with your presence in our home. I married you for gourmet, not spaghetti and bread. Baba beans and salmon, I thought that's what I just said. But you got a problem? Yeah, I got a problem. so mean and if you were mine I'd hold you tight you would be my queen the car is dying Get you, Rachel Shanto. You cannot run from me. I'll find the man who stole you, and I will make him bleed. To keep me sane, your smiling face, never shedding a single tear.
I'm here with uh, Jackie Chintawong Vanich and Nick Tarzia, both of New Rook Productions. Yes. Okay. Operetta must have freaked you out when you, when, you, when you got that one, yes? It was a shell shock. What was your initial reaction apart from the once you got over the shell shock? Just numb a little bit. Very honest. <laughs> and, and then an epiphany that uh, by getting Operetta, we had an opportunity to do something that hadn't really been done before. So that was very important to us, was to show the audience something new. And you did very much do that. Yeah, <laughs> ab ab absolutely. Well, which I think was the great success of, of the film. What a lot of people admired about it was that you, know, you committed to this. What was your creative process like? I mean, how did you decide upon what it would yeah, be? Yeah, it was definitely an all-for-one genre, but it just happened that the more we worked on it, the more things fell into place. Like. Um, Mike and David Kennedy had their own um, metal group that already uh, agreed to um, work with us on the soundtracks. And so Nick had the idea of making it a metal operetta. And then I was like, okay, well, what if we went with a sort of Metal Mafia, so to speak, uh. kind of just rolled from there. So was that concert planned already, or was that specifically put together for the there, there was no concert. There was no okay. plan. That was actually a set in the back of a warehouse that uh. where the uh, candidates, uh, who were, uh, Mike Kennedy is an extremely talented musician, and Sounds of the Silent is awesome. But they actually have this entire setup in the back of uh, this warehouse. Okay. So it was actually completely empty. There was no concert. Everybody was doubling on both sides mm -hmm. of the camera. Uh, I suppose, of course, you, you couldn't record the, the singing live, so you'd have to do that later in, in ADR, uh, alternate dialogue replacement, yeah? Working with ADR gave you more creativity because you may have the look in one actor you like, but you don't have the singing ability or the vocals in that same actor. So ADR gives you the chance, especially in a film festival like this, to go around and actually be more creative and play with it and switch, if you will. Uh -huh. And the audience, when viewing the film, would never actually know the difference. Well, thanks, Jack. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. At the uh, using locations that you have easy access to or are very familiar with can make your filmmaking weekend go much more smoothly. Like here at Fairgrounds in the Ghent section of Norfolk. The filmmakers for our next film can be found here regularly sitting at these very tables having coffee or, or upstairs with their friends. But because of their genre, thriller suspense, their favorite coffee spot had to become entangled in murder. This is The Audition by Team Skelly Films, Channel 757. In local news, it is believed that the Norfolk Stalker is responsible for the death of 29-year-old Rosetta Mullins, whose decomposed body was found in Chesapeake. The police believe she is the seventh victim of the notorious stalker. If you have any information, call 5... Somebody should do something about that guy. Yeah. dressed up for me. Uh, don't flatter yourself. I actually have a really big audition today, and if I get it, it could mean big things. Oh, Grace. You lead such a glamorous life. <laughs> what can I get for you? 
Well, I'm going to be at the theater all day, so um, two chicken sandwiches, hold the bread, two coffees, and a bagel with schmear. And if you can have it to the theater in an hour, that'll be a really big tip in it for you. You know I will, baby. <laughs> I make deliveries there all the time. Oh, this one's on me. Maybe you can figure out a way to pay me back later. <laughs> Actually, I'm involved with someone right now, but the minute that changes, you'll be the first one I call. <laughs> And what will you be doing for us today? Uh, I'm going to be singing a song about someone that I recently lost. My friend Nick will be accompanying me. Now be careful with that coffee, it's really hot. Ah! Holy hoss and fever, this hot. I thought that's what I just said. Jesus, how many times do I have to tell him I don't take sugar? No, you don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs>
Yeah. I'm all for the uh, creepy guy. <laughs> There's always one. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, I love that necklace. Where in the world did oh, you get it? This, thank you, yeah. Uh, this That's one of my beautiful. family forever. I it is remember. gorgeous. Thank you, guys. I've had this thing. Crap. Gotta go. Why is that a mouse? Where are you running off I've to? I've got a hair appointment. Oh, a hair appointment. Oh. Give us a hug. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, guys. I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Break a leg. Okay, thanks. She's going to be wonderful. Like she always is. She in recent news, local cook Raymond Chenteau was found bludgeoned to death at the Fine Arts Theater. Police have no suspects at this time. If you have any information about this case, please call 555 Lock You Up. So I'm here with Ernie Smith, uh, producer director for Skelly Films and Channel 757. And the audition, it, uh, yeah, you shot it in and around here at, at, at fairgrounds. Did it turn out the way you expected? Uh, it turned out about as well as I could have expected. Uh, we unfortunately kind of wrote a, um, a bigger movie. Ah. Uh, and uh, I had to edit quite a bit out to get them the seven minutes. Yeah. And uh, as, you, as you can expect, the, the stuff that I had to cut out uh, added a lot. Is to the stuff story. you loved? So yeah, so it was that was a little bit of a problem. Now, now do you have a now since then you've you've released a, yeah. you have a director's cut. Correct. And how long is the director's cut? Now? Just a, a hair over ten minutes. Oh okay, yeah. okay. That little three minutes of the stuff you love does make a difference, though, doesn't it? It, it does, and it, and it actually uh, it, it adds it puts everything back into the movie that I think was again lost. It was you know if you. If you watch it, you you know, and, and paid attention, you could probably figure out what was going on. But those those that extra three minutes kind of clarified a lot of stuff. So. Did you hit any snags or, or encounter any obstacles you didn't expect? Or we we had to actually go to two days. We took a lot longer to shoot on Saturday. Normally, uh, when we do these things, we we wrap on Saturday about four o'clock and then spend the whole night editing. Uh, this year. For whatever reason, we couldn't finish on Saturday, so I actually had to come back here Sunday morning. On Sunday. And start like uh, Mike uh, let us in about six o'clock, and we wrapped up. Wow. Uh, and so that's where Heather actually came in. Heather brought the crew down here and directed uh, the second half of the film or the fairgrounds half of the film, while I stayed at the house and edited, and edited. the first step. Uh -huh. yeah. Very good. Well, it turned out well. Thank yeah. you. Ernie. Thank you. At the I hope you enjoyed those three movies. Join me next time and we'll see three more, including a superhero film, a time travel film, and a film about a family whose values are, uh, well, not exactly the norm. Thank you for joining me. I'm Keith Flippin. Now go make a movie. Even if we don't win, just cast any of 